Hello, my name is Clint McDonald, and this is the second tutorial in a fairly large series of tutorials that I'm going to make um, with the focus on creating Windows Forms applications using Visual Basic.net. Now we're using Visual Studio 2015 here, so we're using the .NET Framework 4.6.1, just for some context to make sure we're up to date. And we're going to talk about various things throughout the tutorials. Today's topic is looking at projects and project properties as well as some initial form properties for your very first form you're going to do. In other words, setting your project up for success right off the start. There's things you can change at any time in the future, but they're best served if you set them right away, right as you start. It will save you a lot of headaches and hassles as you, grow, as you go through your project. So I've got Visual Studio open here now and I've got a solution file already set up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project, but I'm not going to go new project. I'm going to add a new project to my existing solution. So a new project and I'm going to create this as tutorial 2 and we're going to talk about project properties today. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create our project and it'll bring up our in our solution it brings up our project as well as the first form within the project I'll go into the project properties in a second but before you do that there's one thing that you should always do when you first create a new project and that is to rename the main form form 1 is not a good form name and it's best if you rename it now and that will save you a lot of hassles um, later on so we're gonna right click on form 1 and choose rename and we're going to use Hungarian notation. So it's going to start with lowercase frm, and then I'm just going to call it form main. Okay, so we rename the form, and there it is. Let's rename. And you can see that in the tab window here, it also renamed the file, as well as the code behind file also got renamed. And that's fine. We're going to leave it at that for now. So I'm going to close that, save that form, and there we go. So we've renamed our form. We're good to go. Let's double click on it and make sure it's going to load up again. Nice and did. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the project properties itself. And there's quite a few properties in here, and we're only going to touch on the basics for now. Later on, we'll have a more advanced tutorial that will, sh will cover most of them. But for now, just which ones you have to be concerned with when you're starting your first project. So we're going to right click on the project itself, and we'll say properties. <laughs> and then up comes the properties window. Now, just so we can see some more of the screen here, I'll minimize off my toolbars. So the first tab within the project properties here is the application. And so you have your assembly name and your root namespace. We don't know a whole bunch about those yet, but let me give you some advice up front. If you've named your project really well, you pretty much don't need to touch these. So it's a really good idea just to leave these alone. Set your target framework. Our newest one that's available right now is 4.6.1, so that's what we're going to use what type of application it's going to be. There's all kinds of different ones here, but for most part these tutorials will focus on on Windows Forms applications. You have to set up your startup form. Now sometimes this will change and sometimes it won't. And it just depends on the process you went to, to go about doing this. So if this still says Form 1, make sure you change this to Form Main or to whatever you named your startup form. Okay. You can choose an icon from this point. So for instance, I can go ahead and browse my hard drive and find some icons. So I happen to know that I've got some icons buried in here. So I'm just going to go in here and grab some images. Uh, not there. We're going to grab let's grab some images. And I have a Death Star icon. So we'll go ahead and create a Death Star icon. That's, that's pretty good. Assembly information and Windows settings we're not going to worry about for our applications for now. Those are more advanced. Enabling XP visual styles, it's a good thing to leave them there so you have the flexibility to use um, the newer Windows versions or you can use the Windows XP visual styles. They give you your choice. What authentication mode you're going to do. So if you have an application where you're going to have login and password, are you going to create your own login and password system or are you going to authenticate based on the login and password you use to log into Windows? For the most part, we're just going to leave that alone until we're doing a login system. And then shutdown mode. This is one thing you want to set up almost right away. And you have two choices in here. The first one is, is when the startup form closes, it will close the application. So not only will it close the form, but it will also close the entire application, clear the memory, and do garbage collection. The other option is when your last form closes. 
When you're creating a single form application where you just have one form, it doesn't matter which one you choose because you're going to have one form, you're going to open it, and when you close it, the application will close. However, if you want to start doing some more, more advanced stuff like having a splash screen or having multiple forms where you navigate from one form to another, then you need to choose the option that makes sense for you. If you have a splash screen, it's probably important to change this to when last form closes so that when the splash screen itself actually closes, it doesn't close down the application. That won't make much sense. So the other part is that you also want to make sure that you've set this up appropriately. So that's the applications part. Under compile tag, um, under the compile tab, there's a couple of things you want to do here. Under configuration, we have several different things, debug and release. Okay, you can add more custom configurations on your own later. But for the most part, this tutorial series will leave us into the debug mode of compiling until we're ready to actually publish and create a install installation system where we can actually install our new software. So for the most part, we're just going to leave this as debug. Okay, We're going to leave a lot of this stuff in here. But one of the things you probably want to do is turn option strict on. Okay. And this is something that we'll discuss in another tutorial later. But what it does is it takes Visual Basic from being a beginner's language with a lot of things that you can do in it that are not considered good programming practice. And it eliminates the ability to do those things such that although we're using Visual Basic, which has the, the rumor of being a beginner's language, it isn't a beginner's language anymore. It is an advanced language. And what Option Strict On does is it forces you to be a good programmer even though you're using Visual Basic. So it's a really good idea to always use Option Strict On. Okay? And I'll have a tutorial later which will explain the differences. That's all we're going to talk about on this particular page. We have the Debug tab. Again, this isn't really that important at this point. References. These are the .NET Framework libraries that we're going to use. So you can see system.core, system data, deploying, drawing, XML, and Windows Forms. Obviously if we didn't have Windows Forms library we couldn't do Windows Forms. So it's important to have these references here. For the most part until we do very specific things we don't need to change these references at all. One area that we do play with is the resources area. And this is if we need to embed any images or any fonts or we want to create some kind of a system where we're going to embed some resources, XML files, text files, etc., then this is where we would put them. And the only other area we're going to talk about today is the settings area. And the settings area is where you can pre-configure certain things. So for instance, if you're going to connect to a database, you can put the connection string here in the settings file. And what that does is that you're not going to program your connection string into your program that's compiled. So if you decide to move the database or back it up or restore it or emergency situations, you can actually just go into the settings file for the application and change the connection string without having to recompile the program. That's really important. And we'll talk about that more when we're talking about um, system preferences and creating your own settings system as well as going through and doing global variables and things like that that can change. For instance, you're creating a point of sale software application and tax is a big part of that. Well, the government likes to change the tax rate all the time, so you don't need to recompile your program because the Prime Minister of Canada decided to change the tax rate. You can go into the settings part of the project, change the tax rate there, and the entire application will update itself on the fly. Really good practice. So we'll close the properties here. We've changed a few things. And then we'll bring up our Solution Explorer and, and go from there. So we've set up our properties, we've set up our form, and if I bring up my main form, there's a couple things I want to do right away. All right. So I go into the properties for the main form, the properties window, I know I'm on my form because right here it says form. I'm going to change the text to the form, and this is appropriate to your application that you're doing, but when I change the text to the form, you see the name at the top changes. Okay as well as a few more things I want to do in here. I want to set my startup position for my form. So especially most developers today use multi-monitor systems. If you want the, the testing form to load up on your main screen, you want to change just to center screen. And for a lot of um, style guide situations, center screen is the style guide that's used. 
Another thing you might want to do here is change the icon. So you can see the icon on the top left is the default Windows icon. So we can go ahead and choose our icon again. And again, now we have our own custom icon in the main form itself. Other than that, that's about all we're going to change right now. We'll talk about some more properties a little later on in another tutorial. But for now, thank you and look forward to seeing you in the next one.